Hey readers and writers, today I want to talk to you about the top five things I learned from my beta reader process. So I first made a beta reader video when this was still a part of my other channel, Hannah's Over Invested. That video is on this channel now, so I'll pop the card up above. But I did want to cover a little bit of how that process went for me and then get into the top five things I've learned. If you want to skip to that, timestamps are in the description. First, I found about 20 beta readers for my Dyson novel. I did this by posting on my Instagram and asking who wanted to read it. I sent an email with the first three chapters to all 20 of those people and about 15 of them, which I think is a pretty solid solid number responded to that email. So the reason I sent only three chapters out is because if they didn't read that and complete my questionnaire, they weren't really interested, which is totally fine. People have an idea of wanting something and get busy, whatever. 15 people started reading it. Of that 15, 11 continued to read. Of that 11, one DNF and three finished within the deadline. I gave all of my beta readers about a month because that's when I was getting my novel back from my editor. At that point, I went through, read the novel, implemented the change from the chapters I had received back and the notes from the three people who finished the novel and I've actually sent it out again to a few people who have already read it, I sent out the changed version. Between getting the feedback from my editor and the betas and sending it out again, these are the five things that I learned from the process. Number one, consider everything, then do what you want. But really, actually think about and consider everything everybody says. Give everything everybody says a couple minutes of real thought as if they were absolutely right. Think about how that may or may not change your story, if it will be better or worse, and then do whatever you want. <laughs> there were some things that people were saying to me that were just so outside of what I wanted my story to be, but considering those things made my story stronger because I was able to find places where there were potentially plot holes or things that didn't make sense, or I was able to see, oh, you thought these characters should be in a romantic relationship because of this, 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 but it's actually really important for me, the writer, to have you not think that, so I need to go change those things. But it is most important that you consider the things that you don't like. Those are the things that are going to be hardest for you, the writer, to figure out on your own. So like I said, even if you don't do it, consider it, then do what you want anyways, but make sure you're giving it real consideration. Number two, be aware of neutral statements. I sent my novel out in three to six chapter chunks. The things that I was super aware of is where the reader had neutral statements. So if six chapters came back and all of the answers in my questionnaire were meh or it was okay or no, I didn't notice any change, no, my feelings haven't changed. I know this section of the novel is not evoking the emotion that I want it to and I need to go and look at why. I would actually rather have negative feedback than neutral feedback because at least the negative feedback gives me something actionable but neutral feedback is much harder to figure out. It's usually a pacing issue or at least in my experience I've found that neutral feedback equates to a pacing issue where maybe there's not necessarily bad or boring information there's just too much of it. Number three hone your target audience. I had a couple beta readers where after I received a few questionnaires back, I knew they weren't my target audience. That didn't necessarily mean that I wasn't going to consider their feedback. It just meant that I was considering it with my target audience in mind and thinking about closing in and honing in on my target audience and what those readers might want. For example, I'm writing a vampire novel where the main character does not have a romantic relationship throughout the novel. A lot of people won't resonate with that and for me that's okay, but when readers are coming back saying, oh, it's weird that they're not getting into a romantic relationship or why aren't they getting into a romantic relationship? I need to be able to take out those romantic cue words so that I'm able to make my audience see what I want them to see. Because within my target audience of vampire readers, like romance is a very strong thing and that does happen in the series, it just doesn't happen in this first book. So I need to be able to hone in on what the reader wants and give it to them in a different way that doesn't disrupt the story I'm trying to tell. Number four. Just sit in your discomfort and be okay with it. <laughs> After I got my notes back from my betas and I got my edit back from my editor, I cut probably 8,000 words. I felt so gross that I ever let anybody see that draft that I first sent out. Oh, 
I still kind of feel that way about the draft that's out there now. And I know I just have to sit in that discomfort and own it because it's going to happen every step of the way. I hate that these people saw an unfinished work. I just feel super icky about it. For a while, I was like, I'm never having beta readers ever again. Nobody is ever seeing an unfinished work ever again. But the reality of the situation is I wouldn't have made the improvements that I made without the help of my beta readers. And number five, I learned that I need another round of beta readers. Readers. The book is out with them now on my second beta read, but going from my fourth thing that I learned, feeling like I never want to show the book to anyone again, to knowing and accepting that I need another round of beta readers was really, really tough. But after cutting 8,000 words, I wanted to make sure the story was still flowing and people were still feeling what I wanted them to feel. Showing people your unfinished work is super, super challenging, but it's gonna make your story better. So I really, really encourage that after you edit the shit out of your book, because don't show Show nobody your first draft that is mean after you've edited a bunch on your own I really encourage you to find some beta readers consider everything that they say implement the changes that you want just sit in that gross feeling of people judging your soul and be okay with it because this is a process that we all go through thanks so much for making it to the end of this video I hope that you guys were able to learn something from these let me know if you've had beta readers what your experience was like how you found them also let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in these writing videos I hope you're all happy and healthy and go get some water you're probably dehydrated